Hello everyone, my name is Ian Clancy and I am the course director for LM125 Physics Common Entry. While I am giving my presentation, feel free to ask questions in the Q&A chat on the right hand side of the screen. These questions will either be answered directly in the chat or in the Q&A session after this talk. First, I would like to welcome you to this talk and I hope it will be of some help in deciding if physics at UL is the right choice for you. This common entry program allows you to continue studying for a degree in either applied physics or mathematics and physics. The first semester has modules on physics and mathematics, helping you to decide on what option you want to take before the end of the first semester. There are no restrictions on this choice, so you will get your preferred option. The minimum entry requirements for entry to the program include UL's general requirements of at minimum two H5 grades and four O6 grades, or four H7 grades. These grades must include maths, Irish, or another language, and English. In addition, there is a program specific requirement of at least a H4 in mathematics and a H4 in any one of applied mathematics, engineering, physics, chemistry, physics with chemistry. If you have not met the minimum maths requirement of a H4, but have the necessary points, you can sit the special maths exam to meet this requirement. Physics is the quantitative science. That means we don't simply describe phenomena with words, we use numbers and mathematical relationships. The aim of physics is to describe and hopefully understand nature from the largest scales of the universe to the smallest scales of some atomic particles. And of course, everything in between. We do this using mathematical models that allow precise prediction of these theories, and we can compare these predictions to what is seen in nature. This aspect of physics has meant we have developed the most advanced expertise in measurement of any discipline. If you make measurement of a physical system, you are using physics. If this is, is as simple as using a ruler to find a length or taking a person's temperature, physics has been involved in defining what is meant by this measurement and how the measurement is being done. The most advanced and precise measurements that humans can make are done by physicists. We can even take movies of individual atoms using equipment housed in the university called the Transmission Electron Microscope, or TEM. In fact, it is our understanding of physics that has allowed the development of these measurement techniques. But we can not only measure the world around us, we can use this understanding of physics to influence how things behave. This is most evident in the development of new technologies. With each new generation of technology, phys physicists or people using physics have been at the forefront of these developments. I will take a specific exa example to illustrate this idea, that of understanding waves and how they travel through materials. I have here a short video of a physics YouTuber called Derek Muller, whose channel is Veritasium. In this slow motion video, he is holding a slinky and he is going to release it. When he releases the slinky, watch the other end at the bottom. Note the bottom end did not move until the top of the slinky almost reached it. This unusual behaviour happens because a wave travels through the spring and this happens at a particular speed. Waves are a quite significant fraction of our understanding of nature and physics, but we can use this understanding to both generate waves, understand how they move through materials, and how to measure these waves. This video represents a specific example of technology initially developed by physicists, the ultrasound scan. In this video, we see the traditional ultrasound image across a slice. We can see in this, the beating of the baby's heart, and use the image to reconstruct the sound of the heart beating as well. But with some added know-how, we can reconstruct a three-dimensional image of the baby and see it moving. These are sometimes called 4D scans the four dimension, fourth dimension being time. In fact, we can see the fingers of the baby's hand open and close in front of the baby's face. 
We can even see the baby's face more clearly and see her stretch her face forward. Ultrasound as a technique was made possible by the discovery of piezoelectrics, where we can apply a voltage to a crystal and cause it to change shape. If we apply a changing voltage to the crystal, we can make it vibrate, and if we do this fast enough, we can generate ultrasound. Ultrasound has a frequency or pitch above human hearing. It was physicists Pierre Curie and Jacques Curie in 1880 that discovered piezoelectricity. A physicist, Paul Langevin, in 1917, that discovered how to generate ultrasound, and a physicist, Floyd Firestone, in 1940, that discovered how to measure this ultrasound and create an image from the measured signal. This is at the heart of what physics is about to me. Understand something fundamental about nature and use this understanding to develop new technologies to allow us to do something we could not do before. I will now present some examples of graduates of our programs. Shane McCarthy works for a company called Accenture as an analytics consultant. This company seeks to solve the problems that other companies, even governments, have. Some of the work he has done has involved looking at the, the prescribing behaviour of doctors, looking for operational efficiencies in EU revenue agencies, detecting fraud in healthcare. He's using his training as a, as a physicist to understand systems, to understand their behaviour and to recognise patterns in this behaviour. All this using methods of looking at data common in the areas of physics. Sarah Markham works in the area of medical physics and won last year's Ross Medal awarded to excellence in the, in the communication of physics. Her work looks at a difficulty that surgeons experience while performing procedures using ultrasound to allow them to see what they are doing. Typically, the instruments they use for these procedures are not visible in the ultrasound image, and so the surgeon can only know the position of their instrument by the response of the surrounding tissue of the patient. Her work has used theoretical modelling to create a modification to the instruments to allow them to be visible in the ultrasound image. Tom Melly works as a research and development engineer for FASA Enterprises. He looks at LED development, and so this involves prototyping devices and then developing mass production techniques for these devices. He says his favourite thing to do is to break things and then make them work again. In this way, he can learn how to make them better. Tom is an example of an experimental physicist using his knowledge of physics to understand the details of these devices and every step of how they work, performing experiments to test their limits and identifying ways to improve their manufacture. Katrina Jackman is a planetary scientist who has recently joined the Dublin Institute of Advanced Studies, having previously been an assistant professor in physics and astronomy at the University of Southampton. Some of her work includes studying the magnetic environment around planets, and she is in, was involved in the Cassini mission to Saturn, where she did theoretical modelling and mission planning, as well as ESA's cluster mission in orbit around Earth, NASA's Juno at, Ju at Jupiter, and with data from the Hubble te Space Telescope and the Chandra X-ray Observatory, she did a number of, of, uh, of studies. I represent the Department of Physics here at UL. We work in many areas of physics, but we are primarily an applied physics department. This does not mean that all of us work in a lab. For example, I am a computational physicist and I model systems using computers to see how they may be expected to behave. I will show you just some of the work that other lecturers in the department have done. Professor Ursula Bangert is the Bernal Chair of Microscopy here at the University of Limerick. She worked at the University of Manchester and has worked with Andrei Geim and Novoselov, who were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2010 for their discovery of graphene. Professor Bangert is the person with the primary responsibility for the Titan TEM and uses it to image 2D structures that can exhibit unexpected properties, making them prime candidates for new electronic devices on very small scales. Professor Tafail Syed has interests in medical physics, such as using nanoparticles embedded into clothes that can kill MRSA, a superbug found in many hospitals. He is also interested in the interaction between medical devices and their biological environment so that a person is not dangerously affected. Dr. Robert Lynch is the course director for the BSc Applied Physics, and among his research interests are semiconductor electrochemistry and energy storage technologies. Robert's interests include understanding the fundamental physics of batteries, but also how to stabilize the electric grid, even when there is a large and instantaneous fraction of power from renewable sources of energy, such as wind and solar. For example, 
A conventional power grid is used to control the generation of power so that it matches the demand, but it also stores energy in the form of kinetic energy of large rotating turbines and generators that instantaneously compensate for any misbalance between supply and demand. In an electric grid that is heavily reliant on energy from wind power, there are very few large rotating machines that are connected to the grid in this conventional way and therefore any mismatch in supply and demand becomes a problem much faster. Robert researches different battery systems that can provide large-scale stabilization of electric grids. In particular, he researches flow batteries where liquids can store large amounts of charge as part of a small battery system, systems with enhanced response times. He is also involved in a recent collaboration where Europe's largest battery-powered grid stabilization system is being built in County Offaly. Here, Professor Damien Thompson is looking through a structure called a buckyball. He was involved in work to develop a molecular diode with rectification similar to semiconductor diodes. He has also recently been involved in a collaboration that created a new type of molecular switch that works as both a diode and a memory element. This work may help speed up development of new technologies involving artificial synapses and neural networks. Damien uses computers to model the behaviour of atoms and molecules. By changing these structures or their environments, he can predict how the system changes. This can be used to understand behaviours seen in the lab or to design molecular structures before they are ever even made in the lab. So now that you've seen us and the type of work that we do as physicists, I'll now explain the two programmes that are accessed through the LM125 Physics Common Entry programme. The first is the BSc in Applied Physics. This program specializes in sensors and devices, waves and matter, energy and nature. We want our graduates to be able to investigate phenomena, interpret results of experiments, improve systems and measurements with their understanding and have the capacity to invent new devices and techniques for a better world. First and foremost, this requires an understanding of fundamental physics, such as mechanics and quantum theory, thermal physics and electromagnetism. Further to this, students will learn how to make measurements and controlled experiments. Knowledge of optics helps students to understand how to manipulate light, including lasers, and how to use microscopy to image the smallest of objects. Mathematics is central to this as it forms the structure and language that much of the theory behind physics relies on. Materials, such as semiconductors and the behaviour of liquids under the influence of electric fields, have become ever more important in the industrial world, where semiconductors are the basis for most electronic devices, including computers, and electrochemistry is used in many large-scale industrial processes, as well as applications such as energy storage that I previously mentioned. Of course, we also need to recognise that as devices go to ever smaller sizes, we need to recognise how physics behaves at the smallest of scales. The BSc in Applied Physics covers all this. The other programme accessible from LM125 is the BSc in Mathematics and Physics, which emphasises mathematics. This programme was developed to be a mixing of applied physics and applied mathematics. There is large commonality with the BSc in Applied Physics, but with the added mathematics of this programme, the trade-off in that instrumentation controlled semiconductors and electrochemistry is not part of the BSc in Mathematics and Physics. In their place is added material on modelling of physical systems and more fundamental mathematics such as linear algebra, numerical methods and probability. It is probably rare that a physicist in industry has a job title including the word physicist. This data represents the graduates of the BSc in Applied Physics programme, which has been in existence for much longer than the BSc in Mathematics and Physics. You can see the variety of jobs our graduates have, but you will notice that about half the have engineer as part of their job title. There are a number of areas of physics that are becoming increasingly important to industry as time goes on, but are not part of many engineering degrees. For example, quantum mechanics and methods of advanced measurement are not typically part of many engineering undergraduate degrees. These are areas that graduates of applied physics are well versed in and so can fill this gap. More importantly, applied physics graduates from UL are in demand. Doing a degree in applied physics will equip you with the methodology to approach complex problems and the skills to understand such problems clearly, allowing you to, become, to come up with solutions. This means that an applied physicist will always have a job regardless of the changes to the economy in the future. This demand for our graduates starts before they leave the course. In third year, there is an eight-month industrial placement where students work in industry applying what they have learned.
Companies are impressed by our students and continuously come back to ask specifically for students from our courses. As I go on, so, some companies that have taken our students on placement or as graduate employees will appear. As part of the final year, a final year project provides research experience where students are allowed to work on a project. This project may be proposed by the student himself and supervised by a faculty member. The project could be with a faculty member or research group or with an industrial partner, typically the company the student was in placement with. These projects usually arise as projects devised during the placement that allows the student to have continued interaction with the company. So in summary, I've shown you what the requirements of the programme are and uh, what choices would be available to you should you be enrolled. I've explained what physics is and who does physics. I have also outlined, I outlined our department and the type of work we, we and our graduates have done. But the biggest point that I hope you leave with is the opportunities that this degree could open up for you. If you have interest in the details of how things work and putting this into practice, physics at Limerick is an excellent option for you. The University of Limerick has one of the most beautiful campuses in Ireland with many amazing facilities, including a 50 metre swimming pool and extensive clubs and societies. Our students founded the UL Astronomy Society, for those of you with an interest in that area. They hold a number of events each year and provide a way to meet other students in a social setting. For more general information about courses available at the University of Limerick and the supports available to students, you can find this information at the links shown. If you would like more specific information about LM125's physics and the programmes it leads to, the links are available here. You can also contact me by email at the address on screen. Thank you for listening. So um, I'd like to introduce the course directors for uh, the two denominated programs, that is Applied Physics and Mathematics and Physics. Uh, so they are Robert Lynch and Clifford Nolan. Um, and uh, essentially now we can take any uh, any specific questions that that uh, you want to, to ask. Um, I don't know, Rob or, or Cliff, if, if there are any, any questions that came up that you want to talk about specifically. I think Robert has has a typed a response to pretty much all of them so far. Um, yeah, Cliff, can you hear me? There, there's yeah. a number of questions there near the end, particularly to do with maths and physics. Um, so they're in okay. the new the new uh, new heading and Q and A. So maybe you'd like to talk about them. Uh, okay. Um, I, Ian, I could talk. There was a particular question about uh, how would you know if you if this is the course for you, and and so. I, I gave a sort of an answer that people could talk to us and we are open to talk to people if they if they want to to trash out exactly what the course involves um, because you know we would normally do that on open days and we don't really get the opportunity to do that here so we can answer particular questions if you contact us by email or something and we can chat to you about those types of things um, because it really physics really depends on what you're interested in and in particular the applied physics course is very suitable to for people who are who are interested in doing measurements or in figuring out how things work um, and it's and that's it's suitable for people like that so if you're very interested in figuring out how things work and I don't know taking apart a radio or something like that it's very suitable for for that type of person um, and maybe Cliff might disagree with me on this, but the maths and physics course is more suited to people who who would like to go into the equations that are behind the physics in a little bit more detail um, and less are so, sometimes, but not always, less interested in, in getting into the lab and uh, taking apart things with a screwdriver or, or so on. I might be wrong, Cliff, but that, that's my impression. So it really I, I, depends on you. I would, put, I would put that last one a slightly different way, uh, Robert. I mean, I, I would think that the, the maths and physics degree would be largely aimed at, at uh, students who really do like both subjects and are having a hard time kind of making up their mind to commit to one or the other so that you can have the sort of the, the best of both worlds from that point of view. Um, so I'm just taking a look. Some of those questions now have been moved to the published section. So um, there's one there. What are the employment opportunities from the maths and physics stream? Uh, are the graduates employable uh, easily? So um, 
the employment opportunities, I would say, are, are fairly similar uh, to the uh, applied physics degree. What the what the maths uh, will uh, kind of offer in addition to that, I suppose, is um, what the type of jobs that the mathematical sciences degree students would graduate with. So a lot of those would end up perhaps uh, working in the financial services sector, um, uh, you know, working in risk management, and uh, you know, so. I would, you know, the, I would also sort of just kind of emphasise that the, the maths and physics degree is very much kind of a, a split uh, between maths and physics. It's 50% each, and uh, so it's it's been designed to be uh, as much of a kind of a combination uh, to the uh, applied physics degree and the mathematical sciences degree. So, um, and yes, definitely uh, very very em employable. Uh, you know, for what I am saying in the video there, uh, we have lots of people uh, coming back to us looking for um, graduates, um, especially out of the, the, the co-op opportunities uh, that they do, for example, Seagate, uh, are, are uh, often looking for uh, graduates from maths and physics. Um, then another question. I might add, I might add yeah. that, Cliff. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so like Cliff mentioned, the, the graduates from the two courses aren't really different essentially for the course but but um you're both physics graduates and and if you're a physics graduate you're you're very much needed there'll always be a job for you in the world and and that's for a number of reasons and um, one is that you you learn how to think a slightly different way uh, when you do a degree in physics you learn to approach problems and assess them in a logical way, and that's very much valued in the industry. And both graduates from the maths and physics course and applied physics course are valued for that. The difference between whether you do maths and physics or applied physics is really what you want to get out of the degree. And so if you want to do more maths, then you'll tilt towards the maths and physics, while if you want to focus a little bit more on on getting into the lab, maybe you want to do more chemistry or maybe you want to do more electronics, then that's not available to you in the maths and physics because you know you, you have to do more maths. So there, there has to be room made someplace. But the core physics is the same in the two courses. The core physics modules are available in both courses. And it's really only um, maybe near the end in fourth year or for some of the electives in elect electronics or chemistry uh, that applied physics is different in that way. It's it's more applied and it's it's really up to the student. It's like some students are just more suited to maths and physics and some are more suited to applied physics. Yeah, and just, just to say as well, it's a, you know, the the, la the laboratory work is built into the modules. So the, the physics modules that the maths and physics students take, they are doing the laboratory work for those modules. Uh, it's just like what Rob was saying. It, uh, I think there's a kind of a less of an opportunity to to focus on the electronics uh, side of the laboratory work. Would that be fair to say, Robert? Yes, and chemistry. Less less chemistry. chemistry, okay. chemistry yeah. So then there was another question there from Even. What would be the differences between the maths and physics course uh, in basically? She, Even is asking about the differences between LM124, which is the maths common entry, and LM125, which is uh, the one that we're discussing here today, and um, I suppose the, the major difference is that when you enter uh, the maths common entry, um, you're making a decision again, sort of uh, within that first semester. Um, you would have to choose a particular uh, physics module. Um, I think it's PH4131. Is that right, Robert? Uh, the, the, uh, there's a particular module that you have to choose if you want to ensure that you uh, want to uh, have maths and physics open to you as an option. Um, and then aside from that, uh, you have uh, the other mathematical streams open to you. So you have the, um, the mathematical sciences degree uh, open to you. Um, and you uh, you have all of the uh, programs that are open to you from uh, LM124, uh, so long as you, you pick the, the right options there in, in first year. Yeah. Um, and so from a physics point of view, the big difference is you cannot do applied physics if you go into if you go into the university via the maths common entry route, you have to go through the physics common entry route if you wish to have the two physics options open to you. Right. Um, there was another question there, but I'm looking for that. All right. Uh, what are the contact hours for like for maths and physics? I'm not sure 
uh, what's being asked there. Um, maybe it might be connected with the laboratories, but I, I think I've already answered that, that the laboratories are built into the um, into the modules. Um, I mean, typically you for a typical kind of contact or a uh, contact hours for a module would be you know, two uh, lectures per week and a tutorial. And then for the physics uh, modules, um, maybe replace the tutorial by the laboratory. Would that be fair to say, Robert? Or Ian? No, so, so yes, yeah. so for a physics module, there's about five hours of contact. So about two hours lab, an hour tutorial and two hours of, of lecture per week. OK. Um, and and so it's fair to say that there is a, a large amount of contact hours um, in a physics course uh, compared to something like um, something from humanities or something like that. Um, but but uh, that that's it. That really is to do with it being an applied course, it's particularly the applied physics course. You need to be able to get into the lab and to to do experiments. And I often say to students that those experiments really aren't adding to the workload, but they're more giving you an insight into the physics that you're doing and giving you a clear understanding of the, the maths without having to first uh, worry about the an abstract equation. So you, you get you get to understand the physics and the math sort of deals with the quantitative side of it. That's at least from an applied physics view. But um, of course, if you're going into maths and physics, you probably look at it from a from a different side. So th there is a large amount of contact errors in these courses. OK, um, somebody else is asking how maths and physics is examined. Again, I'm not really sure what's being asked there. I mean, it's the modules that are examined and you know they those modules are examined in no real other different way to to other modules, so I don't think there's anything special. Yeah, uh, yeah. I I think one one thing that should be stated, Cliff, is the the concentration on examining changes quite a quite a bit from from secondary school to university. The purpose of at least the apply both the applied physics course and the maths and physics course is to teach you to think in a different way about physical problems. Um, in the applied physics course, it's a very much an applied approach uh, to doing that. And in the maths and physics course, there's an additional mathematics tools that you learn about to be able to approach problems in a logical way. And the examination part is really only part of the teaching. Um, you're also given a mark at the end, which determines what level of degree you get. But the thing that gets you a job in the end is doing the degree and learning how to think about these problems in a different way. And that that's, you know, it's, it's, so there's a different emphasis in university regarding examination compared to to secondary school. OK, I think so I, I might uh, come in on, on just a, a couple of points I see in the in the, the question and answers. Um, there's there was a question about uh, whether previous graduates have gone on to do meteorology and uh, I do know there are connections through maths and physics certainly through the met to the met office uh, so and we have students who've gone on go, gone on to to the met office before in the past all right um and there was a, another question in terms of the um in terms of changes to the teaching of the course due to COVID-19. Um, so uh, hopefully uh, that won't be too much of an issue uh, by by uh, next academic year. Um, but currently we're on a, a university wide uh, a kind of rolling uh, procedure where where uh, each individual year is on campus at a given week, um, which has meant that uh, that year that uh, first years are on four weeks of the 12 weeks and uh, and the other years are uh, are on uh, 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 three weeks uh, during during the semester. Um, so that has changed things. But again, that's that's hopefully on a, on a short time scale. Yeah, and, and we we've, we've really changed the way that we're teaching um, the first the first year physics modules. And so there's a lot of modules or a lot of the experiments that would have normally have been done on campus are now being done at home. And so students have a, a kit that they bring home and they're doing the experiments on home so as to to offset the, the, the major issues that are caused by not being able to be on campus with an applied degree. Um, so so there is, there is a big change and we have made 
significant changes within the department and within the modules because of COVID. There, there was also another question about uh, theoretical physics. Um, so the question is, is any is any theoretical physics studied such as general relativity or quantum physics? Um, so we don't really do any general relativity during the, the program. Um, there is, we do uh, teach special relativity and maybe kind of the, the beginnings of general relativity, but not not to the extent of uh, a full general relativity course. Um, but quantum physics is quite uh, uh, prominent in the in the uh, program in both programs. Um, uh, and particularly in terms of applications, the applied physics program uh, takes it into uh, uh, semiconductors as well. Um, so, so there, there, there's a, there's a quite a, a significant um, uh, emphasis on the quantum physics uh, compared to the general relativity. Um, so, I don't know, Rob or, or Cliff, if you have anything more to say on that. No. Okay. Oh, thanks very much. Yeah. Um, well, you're saying that in, uh, Ian, I was just looking up, we do have a uh, grad graduates working uh, currently <laughs> in Medirin. Um So Siobhan Dillon, for example, uh, who we see on our weather forecasts regularly, uh, is a graduate uh, from the Maths and Stats Department. So that wasn't specifically the um, Maths and Physics degree, but I think it's something worth mentioning. I think people, when th people think about uh, careers in meteorology, they don't necessarily think about uh, maths graduates. They might think about physics graduates, but I think maths and physics graduates are ideal uh, for that. Um, Peter Lynch is another example who recently retired from Metairn, you know, has having a, a mathematical background. So I I I don't see any more questions. Um, did, is there much mechanical? Ian, did you address? The did you address the astronomy question? I forget. Oh, I no, I didn't. Astrophysics. Um, so, so in terms of uh, astrophysics, um, we don't specifically teach astrophysics uh, in the program. Again, um, in terms of the applied physics program, it's it's very much tied into uh, uh, physics, uh, the type of physics you do in research and industry. Um, uh, although. With astrophysics, in terms of um, uh, instrumentation, that's that side of astrophysics is 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 very tied into the likes of applied physics, um, and um, uh, on top of that, the physics is physics. Um, the context of it uh, can change, but it's it's still physics. Um, so yes, there there's some specific aspects of astrophysics that um, that we wouldn't really touch on specifically, but the underlying physics we would cover. Um, so so yes, it, it's not the normal case that you would study at undergrad astrophysics specifically. It might be a kind of a, a specialized option, but it's it's more usual that you would do an undergraduate in in physics and then specialize in something like a master's in astrophysics um, uh, or or as some sort of uh, minor qualification as as, uh, uh, as part of an undergrad. Um, so so that's that's the case with with astrophysics mechanics. Mechanics is the is the uh, that's another question. Is there much mechanics involved? Um, mechanics is is a fundamental part of physics. I actually teach the 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 one of the the, the second year modules uh, on mechanics, and it's it's the starting point for uh, for understanding many of the fundamental concepts that come out of physics, like energy, momentum, those types of things. So it it, it is a, quite an important part of it. It's a foundation stone as such for physics, and it's it's kind of the starting point as well for understanding uh, things like uh, uh, quantum mechanics, which becomes important as well in the programs. So uh, so yes, there's there's quite a significant amount of mechanics, but uh, I I think it's it becomes. I think mechanics at, at, at Leaving Cert can be uh, quite restricting. It, there, it doesn't explore a, a, a large amount of kind of interesting type of problems. But as you as you as you're able to do more and, and understand the, the the concepts more, you can do far more exciting types of types of things. So uh, that's that's mechanics. Yeah, and there's a related question above it as well, Ian, with the applied maths for the Leaving Cert. The applied maths for the Leaving Cert is is largely mechanics actually, and I uh, so. And they're asking if if that would be a benefit for the physics course. I would say mm. yes, a little bit, but not hugely. But overall, I will make one point on that uh, because I was um, 
uh, I, I, I did applied maths uh, for the Leaving Cert myself uh, uh, before I did uh, uh, the, the undergrad in applied physics and um, I, I certainly found that applied physics at Leaving Cert um, was much more similar to the to some of the the, the type of uh, approach that you take with the theoretical side certainly of, of the physics uh, mod, uh, of the, the modules that we do in physics. Um, so compared to the actual physics uh, leaving cert uh, uh, subject itself, um, there was far more emphasis on on development of mathematical uh, relationships in, in applied maths and that very much tied in uh, with the with the, the physics that I liked at, at university. So uh, that was that was my experience. Yeah, uh, physics is a very broad field. There's there's a whole range of different fields like biophysics, electrochemistry, um, that you wouldn't necessarily directly associate with physics. Um, and like Ian said at the start of the uh, of the his presentation, as long as you're doing measurements or trying to understand physical problems, you're really doing physics. And so if you want to um, get a fundamental understanding of nature or technology uh, then a fit the physics course is a very good course to do and if you want to get into any area uh, in industry that that deals with those types of things like developing uh, prototypes or or anything along that line then having a degree in physics is very useful um, for getting into those industries some industries especially small industries don't quite know what a physics graduate is um, but when, whenever physics, whenever industries experience graduates from our courses, they they want more of them, and so it's a it's a very good degree to have to get into into industry. If you want to get into something like astrophysics or a specialist area of research, you will have to go on and do a further masters or further PhD after you finish the course. But that's true of regardless of what physics degree bachelor degree you do in Ireland. So even if the course is called astrophysics, you'll still have to go on to do a master's in astrophysics if you want to get an actual job in space science. So, you know, applied physics is a good course or maths and physics is a good course to do if you want to, to get into something, a specialist area like that. So the question right at the end there as well, is there much electricity involved in maths and physics? And again, I, that kind of goes back to what Robert was saying early, earlier on. Um, so that yes, there is a, a basic course uh, in uh, electromagnetism, uh, you know, giving you the, the, the grounding in um, uh, electri uh, electri uh, electricity and magnetism at a fundamental level. Um, but there wouldn't be as much a, a opportunity in the maths and physics course to go on and uh, kind of concentrate on electronics, you know, semiconductors and so forth. Would that be fair, Robert? Yeah, that, that would be and that's a good distinction between the two courses. So if you want to get into some area like electrochemistry where you're dealing with semiconductors, batteries, that type of area, then you really have to go along the applied physics route. While if you want to get into something much more mathematical, then it's the maths and physics route. But the core physics is still there in both courses. Um, and so, yeah, that's the big distinction between the two courses is which which route you would like to get into. And electrochemistry and batteries and semiconductors, they deal with industries like uh, Analog, Intel, uh, Sumisem, all of those companies, that's their their area. Uh, while and, and then there's jobs in those companies that are also suitable for maths and physics graduates. It's just, you know, it really depends on what you're most interested in. Um, there was a, a question in terms of going abroad uh, to do co-op. Um, so, so yes, every year a, a few of our students uh, uh, opt to to try and go abroad, for, uh, and usually uh, in recent times, a, a lot of them have been going to the Netherlands. Um, and uh, in fact, the, the the students who went there uh, over over uh, like last year, um, so it's in the spring and summer semesters of uh, of the academic year that uh, you would do uh, co-op. Um, they actually worked all the way through uh, uh, the the pandemic, um, so so they were they were working uh, 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 abroad during that, and they they seemed very happy with their with their placements as well. Um, and I think um, so. The next question yeah. is about the leaving cert physics, Ian. Yeah. 
Of course, it's an advantage to do Leaving Cert Physics if you're going to do a physics degree. And if you're in the junior cycle at the moment and you want to get into the university to do a physics degree, um, you should try to do physics for the Leaving Cert. But we understand that some students just are not able to do physics because of the school they go to or because of the timetabling in the school. Um, and in that case, uh, they're not at a major disadvantage as long as they have an interest in physics. Uh, but it's definitely of advantage to do the leaving cert physics. Co-op abroad. Is that do you answer that? Yeah. Okay. The co-op placement is paid. Um, uh, so, so that's a, another question whether whether there's payment uh, on co-op, and uh, I think in almost all cases uh, they are paid physicians. Yes. Um, De definitely in applied physics and yeah. I guess maths and physics too, Cliff. They're they're all paid, aren't they? Your, oh. your mic's off, Cliff. Sorry about that. Yes, um, I was trying to quieten a dog barking. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yes, it's the same. They're they're paid positions uh, for maths and physics. Um, and uh, I was just about to say there's a question there about uh, scholarships. I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head, but I at some point I do remember seeing information about that in and around the admissions page on UL. So if you Google in and around that direction, you might be able to find an answer to that. I don't know if you know any any more information. Yeah, I, I I think the the scholarships are listed at the at the end of the the page on the programs. So so the scholarships available are are, are listed there. Okay. Um, so I think have we covered everything? What makes physics at UL stand out from other colleges? Can we do that one. I, we didn't do the one above that either, did you? About the engineering degrees? No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I actually very few students from applied physics, and I, I presume almost no one from maths and physics. I, I don't know if that's the case. Do do an engineering masters afterwards. A lot of students go into engineering directly from from their physics degree, so they they go into a a job which is titled as an engineer. Um, many of them become chartered engineers then after a short while because of the area they are working in, they apply to, be, to become chartered engineers and, and become chartered engineers. But I, I don't think many of them do a master's in in uh, engineering after the, after the degree. Um, so what makes physics stand out? Well, so I, I, there was a number of questions about superconductivity and different areas like um, superconductivity, astrophysics, those types of things. We we don't have research in uh, in those areas. I don't think so anyway. Uh, but we do have researchers in in all of the main areas where we teach. So we've researchers doing research of magnetism, on electron microscopy, on electrochemistry. Um, on the interaction of, of atoms on surfaces. Da uh, Damien's doing research on that. And so we have a, a large number of researchers in the Bernal Institute who are doing research in the areas where they are teaching. Um, the University of Limerick is the leading university from my point, from my area in, of batteries. We're the leading university in the area of, of battery research in Ireland with the biggest battery research. Um, in, in Ireland and and uh, we because of that this the lecturers know what they're talking about when they're teaching you and you get to do final year projects if you wish in those areas and so and that me makes those final year projects which last for the whole of the last uh, year of the degree it makes them much more interesting because you're dealing with people that that know what they're talking about and you're doing a, a research project in the area um, that they're researching. And so I that makes it distinct from other colleges. But of course, other colleges have other special specialities in research. So um, they, you know, they'd argue the same thing from but from a different point of view, I guess. 
Is there any, the other things, the, the other big thing that makes a big difference for our graduates is that they have, they have a co-op placement within, within the degree. And so when they come back from the end of that co-op placement, which is eight months long, um, and like Cliff said, it's, it's paid, uh, th those students have, many of them have already not got jobs already for when they finish, but they've definitely secured callbacks for jobs after they finish their degree. And so that's a, that's a really big difference between the physics course in, in UL and other other degrees around you, around the country. OK, I, I don't see any any new questions now, so uh, I, I'd like to thank you all for uh, for coming to the talk and uh, and uh, listening to us and uh, hopefully it's been of some use and that you you uh, um, have, have gotten something out of it. You you can understand where uh, the program is uh, is aimed at and whether you're suitable for it. Uh, if you have any questions outside of this, um, our emails are are, are on, on display at the uh, at the, the websites for the for the programs. Um, so so just visit those and uh, drop us a quick email and we'd be more than happy to answer you. So uh, so thanks again and uh, we we'll leave it at that. <laughs>